Yeah, there is always that weird lag, isn't there? There is that weird lag. And talking of lag, my name is Matt, <laughs> and welcome to today's Mastermind with myself, Matt. And, and me, Dave. Hello, hello. Who's out there in the sunny sunshine? You would not believe how bright it is here in the UK at the moment. We'll get to that topic in just a moment. However, today's topic of the Mastermind for you is uh, why you want a website. And that may sound really, really daft, and we are going to cover a couple of key points because we are going to be assuming that for the majority of you watching this, you've already been and got your site up and running. Uh, and if that is the case and you've not actually started building your own website yet, uh, is that it's going to be a bit more of like a kick up the rear uh, to get you like, gee, you on. To, to refocus your attention. We got on a really nice story, which I've just literally remembered who they're called. Dave even remembered them doing a, mm -hmm. a chat at a, a talk at Catalyst a couple of years ago as well, because uh, there's a very interesting story behind them. So with that said, uh, websites, Dave, why would we even bother with a website when it comes, when, when eBay is pretty easy and Amazon, well, look, they'll, leave, they'll, ship, they'll, ship, they'll ship into the customers for us. Why the hell would we want our own website? I think that's a great question, which a lot of people uh, do ask. And ultimately, that's why they don't have their own website. They look at eBay and Amazon. It's like, oh, we could list an item and sell it within five minutes on eBay uh, or, or on Amazon. You know, on Amazon, we can build up our product reviews uh, yeah, and, and basically uh, put our product in front of hundreds of millions of eyeballs every single month. Why would we want a website? Because we're never going to get to that, that visibility. And ultimately, Matt, the, the answer is protection, I guess. Yeah, I, I think you know, that's one of the, the major reasons, protection. Um, because the, the reality is, is that eBay really doesn't care about you. Amazon she doesn't care about you either if you if you or your business was to fall off a cliff tomorrow they they wouldn't sweat it'd, it'd just be it wouldn't even be a blip on their screen you know they just don't care uh, and the reality and was, is Matt, is that happens every single day numerous times and you in amazon carry on as normal as as they should uh, you know in their business but the reality is you have to say is ebay uh, amazon friend or foe for your business Ultimately, neither. They're, they're their own business. They're looking after themselves. And, and their platform enables you to run an aspect of your business. But what me and Matt are saying right now is it would be foolish for you to put all of your eggs in the eBay and Amazon baskets. Because if the business fell off the cliff or if you get accused of breaking a policy on eBay or Amazon and they suspend you for two weeks a month, can your business survive uh, that period with no cash flow, with no sales, with your outgoings as normal? For most businesses, the answer is no. And that, that's the stark reality here is that you need to have your own corner of the web, uh, which being brutally honest it's the long game it's not the easy route it's not it's, there's no quick wins in doing this but it's building for the long term and it's the sensible thing to do as a business owner yeah i think you're absolutely right there and do keep in the back of your mind that myself and dave were very big advocates of the marketplaces especially eBay and amazon uh, because they do open your business relatively easily and cheaply to, to a very large audience. But do keep in the back of your mind, it's the end of the day, they're there to make money, uh, ironically, out of you. Uh, and there was a comment just there by Amanda just a few moments ago, uh, which was saying, uh, we're pushing our own websites more now, massive profits profits without the commission, uh, jumped in reckons after a, a press release, which we did. Um, so yeah, that, that's, a, that's a major point, is that you don't have Amazon taking 15% plus, you don't have eBay taking, 15% or so uh, from yourselves. Obviously, there is uh, a PayPal or, or a payment transaction fee, uh, which could, ironically, I, I mentioned PayPal there, uh, which will typically be an amount and a percentage. Uh, but if you're using your own merchant services, maybe say via your bank and say SagePay, uh, for, for one example, is that it could be something like 20 pence per transaction, uh, which is nothing like a PayPal fee uh, of sometimes several percent, as the case may be. Uh, so it is always going to be, from a transactional point of view, cheaper to sell on your own website. However, 
there, there's one big thing which we and a topic which we'll get to later on in this mastermind which is around advertising uh and remember you it's all about eyeballs getting the right eyeballs uh on your site and there's many things which you can do for that we've covered that kind of those kind of things with the marketing side uh in uh previous masterminds or and definitely we'll cover them again uh in future masterminds as well but but do keep in the back of your mind is transaction fees are a lot less it is a tangible asset for you and your business so if you for for example thinking later on you might want to sell for example is that having a website which has x number of views has a good history has transactional history has a following facebook page and other amenities which all link back to the actual site itself uh maybe including content marketing you like uh amanda's was a few moments ago talking about content marketing uh, for the actual site is that it will become a tangible asset it is something which a value can be placed on it because if that site is say turning over 30k per month times that by 12 then times that by three four five for the five year period and that's the kind of value of the actual business itself that's what uh, if you were looking to sell is that it is three to five times the the yearly revenue uh, of the business and of course if you've got a website which is turning over 30k plus uh, per month i'm just using that as a ad hoc value uh is that that's quite a lot of money which your business could be uh worth and fact just screw selling it just think how much it's worth to you uh, at the end of the day so anyway uh getting back onto the topic um why would you want a website for your business now th there's a story which i'm going to show and th this is a true story and i'd like for you to to go and look up truffle shuffle so those of you which know what the truffle shuffle actually means <laughs> that funky little dance actually there is a website called truffle shuffle uh, is a husband and wife team uh now their story they're, they're, they'll, they'll probably tell it a lot lot better than i am but the brief synopsis is is that they actually started out uh on ebay and for whatever reason they were thrown off one morning and of course they were sat there with a warehouse full of stock and nowhere to sell it imagine what kind of position were they in they they had to do something and they were then forced down and i i it was probably to their benefit forced down the route that they needed to uh, explore their own website and they're still running today and this has happened years ago now uh, 10 11 12 years ago and uh, we found them on facebook as well their facebook page has uh, 98,000 uh, people who like it and 94,000 people who follow their Facebook page. Their latest post, which was posted four hours ago, uh, which was something to do with Hogwarts, Hogwarts uh, mm -hmm. uh, shared 10 times, 100 comments, uh, 56 likes and hearts uh, in there as well. A comment before uh, yesterday, something to do with Potions Master, again, Hogwarts again uh only one share eight comments and 26 so uh oh, there are some terrible alan partridge stuff <laughs> it's, well i would i i actually stuff. use truffle shuffles um facebook as an example of of how to do social because they run competitions they do engagement they share funny gifts and funny posts and that's they have this interaction as you can see a hundred shares and uh, hundreds of likes and comments and stuff it all just it's it's it may not be converting sales, but it's building a relationship and it's the long term. It's these people who come to your page, see your things, engage with it, and are much more likely then to take an affirmative action at a later stage. So if ever any if you if you're watching this right now and you're struggling with ideas for you know how to engage your audience, build your audience on social, it's all about engaging content. And I think Truffle Shuffle do that incredibly well and have done for a number of years, and that's why they're nearly a hundred thousand uh likes on the facebook page yeah it's absolutely crazy so if you want to that that is a real life example that's a that's a li real life example to me actually here in bristol uh which is that's why i know about them i, I went down and met them many moons ago uh and yeah their website is their business and obviously they've probably been off and explored ebay back again uh gone to look at amazon etc etc but for them their life but of their business is their actual website itself and of course they then have gone on and explored content marketing facebook for example uh, and so on and so forth and again they're, they're doing retro products so it's 
if you've got a sense of humor to go with it, the market is going to be really straightforward. However, on a serious point, I just know one other kind of dynamic which went, which went on with that business is that the amount which they spent on, and probably still do, uh, spend on Google AdWords. So to drive people to their site, uh, they also employ or used to employ affiliate marketing as well. Uh, so it's not just like we'll build the website and people will turn up. They are being active, very proactive. Uh, in acquiring new customers and that's another point which I want to make here is that with your own site you own the relationship with the customer Amazon obfuscate the customer's email address they eBay are going down that route at the moment as well and you've got to be thinking to yourself it was transaction is it and actually it's a sucky answer which is that it's ebay it's like it's amazon that people buy from you on ebay and when it comes to amazon they buy from amazon they don't buy from you you're almost irrelevant from the from the actual situation uh and that that's the brutal reality whereas that on your own site you own the entire process from acquiring a customer at the beginning, and I know this is going to sound a bit scary, and this, but this is exactly what eBay and Amazon are doing. They're just at a bigger scale, is that they're acquiring customers at the beginning. They go through, make a transaction, and then they're keeping the bloody details to himself. Well, why not? Why don't you just do it yourself? Why don't you go on and acquire? Google AdWords is not expensive. It's a topic which we've covered previously. It's not expensive it's, if you don't know anything about it. They, they even have their own training courses for it. You don't have to spend thousands. Our tip has always been to spend five, ten quid a day, especially when you're just starting uh, and get into that. Uh, and just acquire, sorry, acquire a customer, get people on there, own the relationship with the customer. And of course, you've got their email address, you've got their contact, contact details. You most likely have permission. Well, you at least have permission to, to send them order updates, at least, uh, which could include extra promotional uh, messages in there. And of course, in the package when it arrives, there could be extra promotional activity in there. But why on earth would um, you do that? Would you go that type, kind of effort for an eBay store? Well, Amazon doesn't even have a store per se for your items really anymore. Um, there was rumor a while ago that they were getting rid of them completely. Uh, but I'll, I'll, coming back onto the topic is that when it comes to your own website, Dave hit the nail on the head a few minutes ago when he said, it's your slice, it's your corner of the internet. And that's absolutely right. It's your tangible piece of the website, uh, of the internet, which is your website where you can own the entire relationship with the customer i think as well i mean we don't we don't want to come across here as if we're bashing marketplaces marketplaces 100 percent have their role uh and, and like i said you, if you know us by now you know that we're huge fans of ebay and amazon and, and marketplace e-commerce but it all has to come together as part of the bigger strategy so when you're starting out there's no simpler quicker way to get sales than to set up an ebay shop to set up an amazon account and to get products online and to get your products in front of an audience quickly the long game comes when you start taking some of that profit and then building a website and most importantly marketing that website explore where are your audience where where are the people who are going to buy your products they're definitely on facebook they're more than likely on instagram uh, are they on pinterest are they on you know whatever twitter whatever they may be and you start exploring and, and optimizing different marketing platforms are you doing facebook ads adwords bing ads whatever it might be and it's that constant long road of optimization trial and error and and but ultimately investing back money in your website because as uh james has pointed out on the chat the money that you spend in acquiring a website customer you only have to spend that once that customer then is much more like you own the customer details you then have permission to talk to them uh and then it's much easier for them to become a second time customer a third time customer whereas with ebay Someone might come back and buy from you four times, but you'll be paying fees every single time that person comes back. So why not own the relationship? And that's where the marketing comes in. Now, Matt hinted at it before, but in the old saying, build it and they will come, does 100% not apply to websites in 2018 and never will again. It will never apply. You have to show people what you have built. You have to go and stick it in their faces and say look what we've got isn't this great come and give us some money
Yeah, absolutely. We're getting down the route of, of the point of marketing, which is that it's very, very simply is that you need to cite and you also need to spend just the, amount, the same amount of effort. You think when you first started selling on eBay, the first time you started to sell on Amazon, you put an awful lot of effort uh, in to getting the business going, uh, using the marketplaces. We're assuming that's the route which you've come in at. Uh, and you put an awful lot of effort in, and that's why it feels like it's second nature. You know the difference between title, images, blah, blah, blah. But you know all the ins and outs of eBay. You know all the ins and outs of Amazon, uh, and it feels very comfortable to you. And there's me and Dave, and we're, we're saying that websites are the, the long-term goal, and of course they are. Think about uh, the, the example which we use is that, uh, about Apple Pie, is that if you've got a business and half of it's on eBay and half of it's on Amazon, uh, and you get thrown off eBay, you'll get thrown off Amazon, and then you've only got half the pie left. Ideally, what you would like is eBay, Amazon, uh, and then website sales all being a third. So if one part went for whatever reason, uh, is that you still got two thirds available to you. Uh, and that is just a straightforward risk management issue. Uh, so coming back to the, the topic of the, the actual website itself is that eBay and Amazon feel very, very comfortable to you. I understand that. Remember, I used to sell on eBay and I tried to sell on Amazon, but that felt really weird back then. Uh, and it, I understand where you are, which is that it does feel very comfortable. It feels like second nature, for example. And there's Matt and Dave here chatting about you should be building your own website. And you may have like inadvertently built one when you were using Magento and M2 Repro, but really never gave it any, any attention. But the reality is, is that it's just like when we've had the conversation about staff, which was a, a couple of, yeah, was it last week or the week before, Dave? Where uh, Last week, yeah. Yeah, literally, where, where every hour you put into your training a member of staff, you're going to get that 100-fold back. You're not going to get this one like a 100-fold back. It's just like a different learning curve. So you need to learn the things which you need to be doing, one of which is content marketing. Uh, and if you've got no idea what we're talking about content marketing, that is very, very simple. Just creating content which points at your site is or is on your site that could be uh, i'll use truffle shuffle as an example uh, posting a picture uh, about a competition uh, on facebook there we go with some text that is content marketing that is actually uh, a competition in that instance uh, it could be this very simple as a photograph being posted on instagram or twitter for example uh, there's many different forms it could be a blog post which is part of a series which you've been posting uh, on your actual website itself uh, which you've then been then sharing those blog posts in other locations facebook will be in one instagram could be another one uh, twitter is another one as well uh, and maybe you're writing that blog post series on a collection of products because maybe you're a little bit timid of behind but maybe got that idea that it's a bit scary to be on camera but so you thought you may be right and type them out first uh, and then get them to real format and then you're going to do a video series as well uh, and then post that onto youtube as well very personal uh, approach by using uh you balls to your advantage which is basically a free service uh and as many of you know youtube to me and my view on this one's still the same uh, is the third hit it's the third and it's the hidden marketplace uh because it I had, what was it, 18 months, 20 months now, mucking around on YouTube. Uh, I have up, again, just bring it back up to date, I have ups and downs with YouTube <laughs> uh, as a content creator. It's just the way it is. I'm 18, 20 months in now, and I get bored of it sometimes. Sometimes I hate it. Sometimes I love it and things like that. But on a serious point, it does generate a stupid amount of views. Uh, and I've personally created a community of over 2,600 people, which are all hyper-focused on a tiny little niche. And Dave, I am going off slightly off topic here because, but it does have a point, is that mm -hmm. I was stood on a slope, on a hill down at Middle Hope, just outside of Western Supermare here in the UK. Uh, and there's a group of, say, 12, I'd say, I'd say 10 of us which is quite a lot for people slope so and I was chatting to some of the guys there and they'd never seen a meetup like that before, like 10 people all flying together on a slope. It was like almost unheard of. Uh, and that's the thing is that you, we are in an age now where the internet helps people connect with other people of a like mind. So I'm talking about RC and YouTube is great for that, but don't forget Facebook to, and all these other different social tools are great because it allows niches of people to come together. Uh, obviously, that niche could be you and your website uh, and what you've been discussing about the products which you have 
uh, available for sale. So, yeah, absolutely. There's content marketing. We mentioned that a few times, and it's quite a big subject in itself. But in simple terms, it's just discussing and sharing information uh, about products, services, experiences, opinions, and things like that across the internet to a small group of people. And that, to begin with, that group of people could be you uh, and whoever is working in your office <laughs> to begin with, or you and your mum, as the case may be. Uh, but as time grows, and as time goes on, it will start getting shared. You will start finding more places to share it to, and people will become interested in what you're discussing. And remember, there, how many people are on the planet? There's a fair chance there is quite a majority of people who are interested in what you are doing and the products which you have for uh, for sale. So, and why would you market that on eBay or do that on Amazon when you could do it on your own website and have that long-term relationship with your customer? So, sorry, Dave, I've gone off on a bit of a tangent. No, it's fine. Let me lasso you back in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's curious because I, I actually did a talk about uh, a, a topic similar to this, uh, uh, one of uh, Prabat's online seller meetups in Manchester. And I did a talk. We talked about content marketing and a website and, and how everybody is now a publisher. Whether you like it or not, you are publishing content. That's a John Hayes quote. John, if you're watching, thank you for that. I've stolen it. Um, but you are basically a publisher. And, um, you know, if you're publishing content on Facebook, if you're sending emails, Instagram, whatever it might be, you're publishing content. And once you put yourself into that mind with your business, it's another hat that you have to wear, granted. But it's you can't you almost can't afford not to wear that hat these days that's just how this generation the next generation are all consuming content and you know it what the point i was coming on to making there was that when you looking at sort of content creation it, as part of your business I, I remember someone coming up to me after this talk I gave in Manchester. He said, I really like what you said about content creation. I've got lots of ideas. Can I create content and then point them to an eBay listing? And I was like, uh, you could, but you've missed my point entirely. It's like, you know, the point of you con creating content is to bring customers to your own website so they get to know you and you get to own the details. Sending them off to eBay or Amazon, yeah, it might lead to a sale, but that's led to a sale where you're then paying that 15% commission. You don't own the details. It's a much worse deal for you. Whereas investing a little bit of time, a little bit of money, building a website, an e-commerce website, we've got a whole course which shows you how to do it on Magento One, but doing that and then being able to retain the customer information that permission is it's basically permission marketing. Having the permission to talk to them, to engage with them on multiple platforms, that is where the value is in your website. That's where the value is in 2018 into 2019 and beyond, especially with video content. Me and Matt have been banging on about video now for well over a year. It's not going anywhere. It's only getting bigger. The fact that eBay now still don't have a, a fully formed function for you to embed videos onto your listings anymore is backwards. So have a website which enables you to do that. Make your website sticky. It, it will automatically have a function that eBay cannot do right now. Yeah, it's almost backwards, like you said. It is right? backwards. Oh. They, you used to be able to do it, but because the active content warriors went after it, you know, they've not found an answer for it. Uh, yeah, let's not even go there on yeah, that one. That's a, <laughs> that'll get Matt annoyed. We won't go there. <laughs> it, it does frustrate me. Yeah. And actually, there's another reason for you to be exploring your own website is that it's your own rules. Absolutely, you know, it's not someone else's. Obviously, it's common sense. That's why we have certain, like, uh, what was it, GPDR, whatever it was. It was yeah, yeah. The, uh, you have distance selling regulations and like common sense, mm -hmm. right? There's no two ways about common sense. Uh, and, and unfortunately, there's always one idiot uh, in 2,600 people, uh, which need you require you to, to write some rules because there, there's always one plank out there. But the rules which are applied to the actual site, website itself, transactional. It's all pretty straightforward. It's all, frankly, common sense if you think about it at the end of the day. Uh, just looking at it here on uh, our notes in it, uh, the biggest one is something tangible to sell. So if you were, were to ever go on and sell your business, you have some, you have a website. Uh, it's mm -hmm. a lot easier for a third party to understand and comprehend uh, as composed, compared to eBay and Amazon. I don't know why that is because uh, on a scale of 1 to 10, websites, you know, websites are... Miles easier than eBay and Amazon. So, 
curious anyway horses for courses uh do keep it up ebay doesn't care about you and amazon doesn't care about you no no matter what they say in the marketing fluff or a meetup is that it's like dave said to start reality is that businesses go out of business every single day and they're not going to sweat uh losing one or two or more uh, every single day it's just the way it is whereas that for you it's a massive difference whether you stay afloat or not uh, and as such, having risk management in your business and having eBay, Amazon, and your website as a proper viable sales channel would make a massive difference. So whichever site is your biggest for you, whichever source of income is the biggest for you right now, imagine if you were doing that through your website as well, because you basically just told yourself it's perfectly possible because you were doing however much on Amazon, you were doing whatever much on eBay. So you know the customers are there, you know the people are buying the stuff, all you need to do is just get in front of the right people. Straight, and it is as straightforward as that. There's no point uh, overcomplicating stuff. Uh, the other one's it, it, big one is influence. You have the direct influence over your customers, whether they are repeat, new, or potential customers uh, over your site. And it's somewhere where you can focus your attentions to. It doesn't matter if you are a little bit scattered going on what you're doing, whether you're on a little bit of Facebook, you're on a bit of Instagram, a little bit of Twitter, uh, so on and so on, maybe a little bit anywhere, wherever else, uh, is that it is a central point of reference which you can maybe start with or point people back to. So if you're talking about a product in a YouTube video, just be blatant and say, uh, there's links to this product down in the video description underneath this video. Uh, that'll take you across to our website and you can go and grab yourself one. It's not, it doesn't have to be slimy. It doesn't need to be sleazy uh, at all. You just need to be transparent. And that's actually the biggest thing uh, mm -hmm. is being blatantly honest, especially when it comes to video as well. Just let people know that you do work for company XYZ and they can buy the product which you're discussing. Uh, and there's a link to it in the video description. So help people along and make those points go through. Uh, we did have a note in here, Dave. Any website should aim to have a 100% conversion rate. <laughs> uh, and I think that that's maybe a little bit optimistic. Just it's true. Bit. That's what you should aim for. You'll never get it, but that's what you should aim for. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're talking about conversion rates at 100%. So that basically means that every person who turns up on your website <laughs> Uh, would then go through, make a purchase, uh, and give you money. That would be, per in, in a, an ideal world, that would be great. Reality, it's more uh, like 15, well, 10 to 15%. Depends how much advertising and how targeted you are being uh, with your content management and the other strategies which you've got. Uh, what's going on there? Yeah, while you can make good sales on Marketplace, you can use your own website as an additional revenue source, kind of as a point which we've been making here as well. Uh, and what's that little note? Yes, fair enough. Yeah, and just keep in the back of mind, but the reason why eBay and Amazon works really well is that they've just spent a lot of time and a lot of money uh, and effort uh, on driving people to their actual site. Uh, and that's really the only difference between mm -hmm. you and a site like Amazon, for example, uh, is that I, I use that very loosely, that statement, uh, for the products which you sell, is that they just have more people there, more eyeballs on there. Uh, and that's not going to happen overnight. You can pay your way in uh, for using advertising, even Amazon product level ads, for example. Uh, there's, there's many different routes going on, uh, which you can drive traffic to your products and your website uh, is the real hub of what you should be doing outside of the marketplaces. eBay and Amazon's existence should really only be there to fund the promotion and the longevity and the, um, I'm going to call it the promotion, I think is probably the best word, uh, of your actual site as well, because it's the site which has the biggest return potential compared to, to eBay and Amazon. And, I, and, I, and I've met people before which go, well, no, nah, website's too much hassle. I'll just stick it on eBay. And the ironically is it's bloody harder to set, set stuff up on eBay than what it is on a website. And half the time, you were probably using a platform which could list onto the website and eBay at exactly the same time. It's only just different little bits of information. So Dave, I can see you were sunning yourself out there. I'm doing great, mate. I'm, I'm I'm making the most of this. It's funny. Manchester's at a standstill right now. There's just people looking up at the sky, wondering what that big yellow ball is. Um, but yeah, no, it's normally Dave. You have liquid sunshine. Don't we you? do. We have the liquid grey sunshine. That it's uh, yeah. It will never catch on, unfortunately. Uh, but we have plenty of it. 
Um, but yeah, I, I was going to say as well that uh, we, we mentioned Truffle Shuffle and their story, and I wanted to talk about um, My First Wish and and uh, those guys. Yeah, really, really nice guys uh, behind My First Wish. They started out uh, on eBay, on Amazon, and uh, had a website, but they, they really did kick ass on eBay for a long, long time. And were very well regarded by eBay. They, you know, used to go to get asked by eBay to go and talk at eBay events, and you know, a, a second business splintered off, uh, trying to help other businesses do what they did, and uh, you know, they saw, saw huge success. And then they sort of went a different. It's like a, a pivotal moment when they had a sort of a rebrand and went after influencer marketing to the point where they now i think public desire is the name they now have over a million instagram followers and they you know they now rather than spend again it's it's, it's get why do you want a website because you can take people to your website and own the relationship so with their one million instagram followers, i'm sure it's probably close to 1.2 by now uh, i've not checked in a while um but it was they would invest in influencers. So again, they would send, they were a fashion seller. They would send clothes, shoes, boots to people with an audience on YouTube, on fellow Instagrammers, whatever it may be, and reach this audience. And again, influencer marketing, it's been in the press recently, had a bit of a bad name, but ultimately you can ignore the power of an influencer. And again, in, in a, in a, in the right niche, in the right, focus of your business getting the right people on board who will already have an audience and are willing to introduce their audience to you can be very very powerful and can also real you know end up with you owning another relationship um their audience becomes your audience and everybody's everybody's happy so it's that's a sort again someone else who's made the pivot from ebay and trust me they were killing it on ebay and they decided to go a different route. We can, I can, I've not ever asked them about this, but I can only assume it was due to the cost of selling on marketplaces. They found out a, a website was a much more profitable route to go. And again, from a marketing point of view, you own the relationship. You have a lot more clout uh, as a business when you have a website that works. Um, so when it comes down to why you should have a website in 2018, you should have had one three years ago, four years ago. Um, but it's never been more that important. It's so brutal, isn't it? Though? It is. It is. You know, it's one of it's it's one of those things where it's like a year ago you'll thank yourself for starting today if you don't have one already. You know, it's one of those, there's never a perfect time to start other than right now if you haven't already got one, and it's always too late. You should have started earlier. It's the same with email lists, Matt, isn't it? You know, you always wish you'd started compiling email lists. You know, your, your email subscribers earlier than you do. It's exactly the same. You're going to wish you started sooner because ultimately, yes, it's the long way. Yes, it's not easy. Yes, it's not glamorous. But ultimately, it's the way that will pay dividends in the long run for your business. It'll give you mo much more options to market and, and grow. Yeah, absolutely. Right. It's time for us to wrap up today. If you have any questions or comments about anything which we've been in discovered, uh, discussed today, uh, you can post those either as a comment underneath this video uh, or nip across to understandingee.com where you can find out more about myself and Dave uh, and the shed loads of training courses which we have there as well on the topic of e-commerce. Yeah, I just uh, want to give a shout out as well, Matt. Uh, Maria on the chat chat has made a great suggestion we have been to a google garage recently and they did courses on social media writing and marketing they've been really useful and it's all free definite shout out to google garage they've had one here in manchester for a while there's one i think in birmingham i think they, they pop them up and scatter them around the uk and it's all free you know it's google you know that they're they're investing in you it's their it's google's content marketing they're giving you content so you come and use google's stuff it's very very clever but definitely worth checking out. I'm sure they've run AdWords workshops and analytics workshops. So yeah, go to the website, check them out. Google Garage. It's uh, definitely worth a look. I'm free. Absolutely. 
Uh, next week's topic is using fear as a motivator. So that'll be next week, Matt. Yeah, uh, you knew I knew that. <laughs> <laughs> I only saw because it was on the screen. Now, we laugh. Uh, is that, you know, using fear as a motivator. That is going to be next week's topic for our mastermind, which will be exactly the same time. And of course, uh, we've been recording this live. So if you have any constructive feedback, good, bad, or ugly, we would love to hear you on the format itself. If you've been and enjoyed today's live session, do us a favor hit the thumbs up. And on that note, from myself, Matt. And from me, Dave. Cheerios. See you next time. Bye-byes. Bye-byes.